Hello and welcome to this video where we will look at the power of the sum function in Excel. We are going to see some advanced examples of the sum function doing things that you may not have known was possible. The sum function is the most used function of Excel, but many people do not realize its true potential, especially in modern Excel i.e. Excel 365 and Excel Online. So in this first example, what we want to do is we want to sum the values for two criteria and we need the OR logic. So I want to sum the values for sales of burger and of pizza from the table to the left. Now, typically people may achieve this by using two sum if functions and adding their total values together, or they may use a function such as sum product. And these will both accomplish the task. But good old sum can do it on its own. So in cell G3 here, if I start my sum function, and I'm going to select the values from the total column, it doesn't matter which order I do it in, whether I choose the total values first or the criteria first. But the reason I'm using the totals first is because that's the order that the sum ifs function works. So it's nice to keep things consistent. I will then multiply that and open up a set of brackets to write my criteria. The criteria will be if the product column is equal to the values of this range. And I'll select the two cells E3 and F3 in that range, close off the bracket for the criteria, and then close off this standard sum function. And pressing enter will give you those totals, 7,088. How awesome is that? All achieved with our good friend, the sum function. Now, if you're wondering how this works, if we dive into this, the condition will calculate and will produce these true false values depending on whether it meets that condition of burger and pizza. When you're looking at an array such as this, a comma is used to separate columns and the semicolon is used to separate the row. So we can see we have false for burger, false for pizza, false for burger, true for pizza, and so on. Now that array is multiplied by the values. So when that is done, we then get these totals. And these totals are finally summed by our good old sum function. Now I am using Excel 365, so I can write this formula the way I write any formula. If you are using a version prior to 365, you're on 2013, 2016, 2019, any of these guys, then you will need to press Control, Shift, Enter to run an array formula. Okay, I will press Escape to abort that formula and let's look at what else we can do. We have already seen the example of the sum function performing or logic, so it's not really a surprise that we can add a little bit more to that to get some AND logic as well. So jumping into this sum function in cell E6, I will sum the total values and multiply that by my first criteria. The criteria is always entered within brackets. So this is the same as before, product column is equal to the values in that range of cells, which is only two, but it could have been more. Close off that bracket, multiply it, and open up a bracket for the final criteria, which is in addition to being a burger cell or a pizza cell, it must also be that the region is equal to the value in G3, which is currently west. I'll close off that bracket and then close off the sum function. And running this gives us 1433, three, which is the correct total for burger or pizza within the region of the West. 
So did you know that we can even use a sum function to perform a lookup? And let's take that a bit further and do a two-way lookup. So very commonly you'll see people using an index double match function to achieve this. Match to find the row, match to find the column, or maybe a double X lookup in Excel 365. X lookup's a brilliant function but would use the two to create this two-way lookup. Well, good old sum can do this. Now the sum function will only work if you're returning a numeric value. So we still need alternative approaches if you're getting text. But in this example, we are returning a number. So I'm quite happy with just a classic sum. So equal sum open bracket and I will feed it all of the values, that entire array from B5 to E9. Multiply this by our first criteria in brackets. If the product is equal to the one entered in A2, close bracket multiply, it's just building in this AND logic like in the previous examples. Open up the brackets, select the headers, of uh, this range, but it could be a table. And is it equal to the value in B1? Close the criteria, close the sum function, and pressing enter returns 111, just like the X lookup in index match match. Uh, that we can see the formulas displayed in column E there for what's happening in column D. There's our X lookup, X lookup doing its job. There's our index match match. But look at sum here achieving it as well without all that extra fluff. Just to fully demonstrate this, if I changed coffee to juice, it will happily return that value. Or if I change Manchester to Plymouth, once again, successfully getting the 402 for juice and Plymouth. Now, seeing that previous example, it's not much of a step to know that we can sum those values. So that two-way lookup returning that single value, uh, a bit like a VLOOKUP would return a single value, but with the sum function, it can do its typical task of summing values if you have multiple. So this time I've got fruit in A2, and you can see there are three occurrences of fruit in column D there. So doing the same sum function as before, although the range is slightly different this time, it's F2 down to I16. And I'll multiply it by the conditions like we've been doing. So whether the product column is equal to the value in A2 there, close bracket, multiply next bracket, selecting those headers in row one, if it's equal to the value of B1, and closing them both off the criteria and the sum function. And running this gives us 997, for fruit in Lincoln. So I have seen, and indeed I have demonstrated myself in the past, using a sum ifs function and combining X lookup with it to look up the column, which is pretty cool, but we could achieve it with just the sum on its own. Don't you just love in Excel how there's so many different ways of achieving a task? Now these sum functions I've demonstrated with only one, two, three at most criteria, obviously you could ask a lot more of it. There is no limit to the conditions that you ask from it. So it's very, very powerful. Now the last example of the sum function here, just to do something a little bit different, is to show how we can use it to calculate the weighted average. I have some different assessments here, three assignments, two exams. We have the scores and they each contribute a different weight to the overall score. Now we can see the average is 78.2, but we want to add the weight. For example, the final exam has a greater weight than the others. So we can start our sum function and simply multiply the scores by the weight and then divide by the total weight. Now the weight in this case are percentages that total 
at 100%. So I'm just going to divide it by one, but there's a bit more you can get into with weighted averages there. Not going into detail on that stuff, because we're here about the sum function. That's what we're here for. And weighted average is just an example of yet more that it can do. Closing that bracket and pressing enter says that the weighted average is 76.5. So if you didn't know before, now you know that a sum function is much more powerful than what many people realize, especially in modern Excel where we have the array engine built into it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to be notified about the latest Excel videos at this channel. Take care and I will see you again soon.